I want to look at today, what is the difference between the Old Testament and the Tanakh? Jewish people use something called the Tanakh, and Christians use something called the Old Testament. They're two holy books. They are holy scriptures. The Tanakh is used by Judaism. The Old Testament is used by Christianity. But where did these two books come from? Are they the same? Are they different? First of all, let's clear up the ambiguity. When we're talking about the Old Testament or the Tanakh, we're talking about a book. But that book is a collection of other books. So you have books within a book. So let's clear up that confusion right off the bat. So we're talking about two books here. We're talking about the Tanakh, which is one book, and the Old Testament, which is another book. Now, what is the difference between these two books? And the biggest difference between these two books is the number of books each of them contains. The Tanakh contains 24 books. The Christian Old Testament contains 39 books. However, the content of the Tanakh and the Old Testament is the same. So how do we get 24 books equals 39 books? How can the 24 books of the Tanakh equal the 39 books of the Old Testament? Generally speaking, what happened was the people who compiled the Tanakh took the material and put that material into 24 books. When they compiled the Old Testament, the people who compiled the Old Testament took the same material and arranged it in 39 books. What the people who put the Tanakh together did was they merged certain books that in the Old Testament appear individually, the Tanakh takes some of them and merges them together in a single book. And that's how we go from 39 books in the Old Testament to 24 books in the Tanakh. But both the Tanakh and the Old Testament were translated into English from Hebrew using the same source document. And this document is called the Masoretic Text. It gets its name for the Mazarines, who were the ones, the scribes, who wrote down the Hebrew language Bible books century after century, recorded them and made sure that the content of those original books remained intact as they recorded it generation after generation. So both the translators of the Tanakh into the English and the translators from the Old Testament into the English use the same source material. So obviously, you're going to get the same content into the English language. Now, how you arrange that material and categorize that material is different. And I'm going to show you the differences between the way that material and those books are organized in both the Tanakh and the Old Testament. Here is a list of the books in both the Tanakh and the Old Testament. You can see on the left... The Tanakh has 24 books. The Old Testament on the right has 39 books. The Tanakh orders the books in three sections, and you'll see that in the table of contents. It categorizes the books in the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. The Old Testament, however, doesn't categorize all the books into three sections. It just has one continuous section, and all the 39 books are listed 
in the order in which they appear. Now, what I've done is I've taken a color coding scheme and I've showed you which of the books from the Old Testament were merged into one book in the Tanakh. So we see in red, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel became one book in the Tanakh. 1 Kings and 2 Kings became one book in the Tanakh. 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles became one book in the Tanakh. Ezra and Nehemiah became one book in the Tanakh. And then the 12 minor prophets going from Hosea to Malachi, those became one book in the Tanakh. And that's how you end up with 24 books as opposed to 39 books. Now let's look at briefly three scripture portions from the Tanakh and the Old Testament so that you can see that the content is basically the same no matter which English or other language translation you go to. The material and the content that you're going to be reading is generally the same. So we're going to take an example from the law, the prophets, and the writings from the Tanakh and pull out that same portion of scripture from the Old Testament to show you how similar they really are. From the section of the law, from the Tanakh, we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 15. We read it in the Tanakh. From among your own people, your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself. That is whom you shall heed. In the Christian Old Testament, same section of scripture. Moses continued, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Now I'm taking my material for the Jewish scriptures from online, safaria.org, and for the Christian Old Testament, the New Living Translation from biblegateway.com. Let's look at a portion of scripture from the prophets. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4. First, in the Tanakh we read, Thus he will judge among the nations, and arbitrate for the many peoples, and they will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not take up sword against nation, they shall never know war again. Excuse me, they shall never again know war. And we read it in the New Living Translation. The Lord will mediate between nations and will settle international disputes. They will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer fight against nation, nor train for war anymore. You can see very similar understanding of the original Hebrew. When we turn to the third section of the Tanakh, we see that the same thing happens. I just pulled out another scripture, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 4. We read in the Tanakh, Who has ascended heaven and come down? Who has gathered up the wind in the hollow of his hand? Who has wrapped the waters in his garment? Who has established all the extremities of the earth? What is his name or his son's name, if you know it? And if we look at the New Living Translation, the same portion of scripture we read, who but God goes up to heaven and comes back down? Who holds the wind in his fists? Who wraps up the oceans in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? What is his name and his son's name? Tell me if you know. So here is just a brief explanation explaining to you that even though you may look at some variations in the translations, different wording, Old English, New English, uh, different grammatical styles, 
basically the content of what we're reading is the same. And you'll find that throughout the Tanakh and the Old Testament. There may be some variations, minor variations in some of the translations that you would come across. So I would encourage you, if you're a Christian, continue reading your Old Testament. And I would encourage uh, all people to read their Bibles to learn more about God.